Thank you very much. I feel like my life dreams are now fulfilled, <laughs> walking on to Barry Manilow. Um, I, I'm going to build on quite a lot of the ideas that Alison's already mentioned. Um, and uh, mainly I'm, I'm drawing on a study that um, Alison and I, along with our colleague Susie Hulley, conducted several years ago. It, it was a comparison of public and private sector prisons. And um, after we'd collected our data, the three of us spent um, an afternoon trying to work out the, the, the sort of emerging themes from the study. And we asked ourselves if we were blindfolded and then taken into one of the seven prisons in the study, and then if the blindfold were removed, would we know whether we were in a public sector prison or a private sector prison? And all of us felt that we would. Um, when we discussed why, we concluded that we would know if we were in a private prison because it would feel slightly lighter than a public sector prison. Um, lightness was partly about regime issues, so things like um, the number of hours spent out of the cell. It was also about things like what clothes and goods were allowed, so things that made the environment feel a little bit more normal and a little bit less depriving. But it was also about staff attitudes and treatment. So prisoners in the private sector prisons that we went to tended to say, staff treat you uh, more like a human being, less like a number, they're more approachable, they're a bit less judgmental, things like this. And lightness was also about the way that staff used their authority. So prisoners would say things like, well, they're not always on your back in here. They're not trying to make it like a boot camp. And on the other hand, um, prisoners in the public sector prisons that were part of that study tended to describe their experience as being a bit oppressive or heavy. And this term, heavy, conveys the sense that the sentence is, feels like a, a sort of weight on your shoulders. And again, those feelings were mainly to do with the attitudes and the behaviour of uniform staff. So in prisoners in the public sector would more often say they can be slightly overbearing or they can be slightly antagonistic, and that adds another layer to your sense of being punished. And we did find among the public sector staff in that study a slightly stronger sense that prisoners were unworthy of respect. And what prisoners would say, and what we sometimes detected, was that officers um, would sometimes overuse their power because they didn't like prisoners very much or, or they were indifferent to their needs. So expressed in this way, a prison that's light sounds like it's preferable to one that's heavy. But when we gave out very detailed surveys to prisoners in all of the seven prisons in the study, it turned out that um, prisoners preferred two of the, the two public sector prisons to three out of five of the private sector prisons. So it was clear that prisons that were a bit heavy were better, as far as prisoners were concerned, than prisons that were a bit light or a bit too light. And so part of our challenge was to try to work out why. And the answer was to do with the way that staff in the two sectors used their authority. So in the less good private sector prisons, what we found was um, serious weaknesses in the use of authority. So that meant staff failing to intervene when there were incidents um, and being a little bit reluctant to impose their, the rules or use their authority. So staff were underusing their authority either because they were a bit naive or lenient or because they lacked um, skill and confidence, jailcraft, as Alison said. And that partly reflect, reflected the fact that there were fewer staff in the private sector establishments, but it was also to do with a lack of experience and professional competence um, within the staff body. So the result was uh, that the private prisons were often a bit under controlled, unpredictable, and sometimes chaotic. So to read from the quote, this is a prisoner saying, it is mayhem sometimes, they have not got a lot of control Certain wings, the officers are not running the wings. The lads are running the wings. It's not good, is it? So that phrase, it's not good, is it, is a, it, in a way is an illustration of the fact that prisoners don't want the prison to be run by other prisoners. They want staff to um, embody authority, to be in charge, to use their power responsibly, 
to set clear expectations and to be able to use their power when that's needed. So this, the kind of light culture that I describe, this kind of relaxed culture, is a bit double-edged because it, could, it sometimes meant an environment that was less oppressive, so there was less provocation from staff, more space where you could feel a bit of freedom, a bit of autonomy, but it also meant that there was a bit more space in those prisons for prisoners to exploit each other. So prisoners would often say things like, well, it, it's more relaxed in here, in this private sector prison, because staff aren't on your back, but on the other hand, staff aren't vigilant enough, and that means I'm looking over my shoulder because of other prisoners. In contrast, in the public sector prisons, uh, what prisoners often said they appreciated most was a form of reliability and predictability. So that applied both to the organisation of the regime, so a predictable, well-run regime, but also, again, the way that staff used their authority. So it gave prisoners more security and certainty about the rules and boundaries, more confident about the ability of staff to deal with incidents quickly and competently. So staff were more present in the environment, and that's not just through being there, kind of being on the wings, but also being able to imprint their authority onto the environment. So all of that meant that, um, in some respects, a slightly heavier staff culture could actually create an environment that, um, that could feel more rather than less relaxed. The other sense in which staff presence was um, important was in providing prisoners with guidance, support and boundaries. So that included mentoring, but also advice on how to progress through the system. And then something rather complicated, which is prisoners saying, well, I need boundaries, not just to protect me from other prisoners, but also to protect me a bit from myself, from giving in to temptations, drugs, getting involved with other prisoner groups, and so on. So at some level, prisoners were recognising the need for and the benefits of some level of power flowing from staff to prisoners, even when that power was used against them to some degree. So prisoners would say, you do need a bit of authority in your life. It can, it can be a good thing for you. So our conclusion was that lightness, as well as heaviness, could be undesirable, and that, to, and that in thinking through which forms of lightness and heaviness were preferable or more legitimate, we needed to combine these ideas of heaviness and lightness with this, which is a different axis, um, absence and presence. And what we mean here when we talk about um, absence and presence is partly about the availability and visibility of staff, particularly uniform staff, it's also about the depth and quality of um, their engagement with prisoners, their willingness and ability to supervise and police prisoner activity, and their competence in using authority. And we've come to think of many of these qualities of presence as being something like professionalism. So we would argue that professionalism is an under-recognised, under-appreciated strength uh, a, a, an important dimension of prison officer work. So the combination of heavy light and absent present gives us this diagram. And obviously we know that there's a great deal of variation within the two sectors, but at the time that we did the study, we felt fairly confident that the public sector prisons were typically heavy present and the private sector prisons were typically light absent. So in the light absent prisons, prisoners appreciated that staff were polite to them, but said, that's less important to me than feeling safe, having my needs met, have, making sure my questions are answered, and so on. So private sector staff were, were often described as nice, but less effective than public sector staff. So public se sector staff were sometimes less benign in their attitudes, but more knowledgeable and better able to run a regime. In both sectors, the corners of the quadrants were the least good places to be, as it were. In the private sector, the culture at its worst was what we would call naive permissive, and that created an environment that was unpredictable and insecure. In the public sector, the culture at its extreme could be traditional, cynical, a bit Mr Mackay, to use the 
porridge language that we heard earlier. And so the, in the environment could feel a bit grey and oppressive. But the fact that this was a public-private study is a little bit of a distraction for two reasons. The first is that this diagram has helped us think a great deal about the different ways in which power can be used within prisons. We would argue that the heavy absent quadrant is the least legitimate because prisons that fit into that quadrant are oppressive and insecure at the same time. So power is used only in its negative forms. So prisoners are subjected to heavy forms of power, but they don't get the protection, uh, support or guidance from staff that I mentioned earlier. And one version of that is the American supermax prison. So very, very controlled, but with um, very limited staff-prisoner relationship. But we've also found examples of this in England and Wales. So um, in some high security prisons, for example, staff have retreated a bit from prisoner engagement, levels of trust between staff and prisoners are low, and the environment is very controlled and at the, other, and at, and at the same time is still very dangerous for prisoners. In contrast, um, the quadrant uh, on the bottom right, light present, is the, the most legitimate place to be. So these are um, establishments where power is certainly flowing, but it's flowing quietly. It's working through relationships, staff-prisoner relationships. So staff know their prisoners, they understand prisoners' moods and preoccupations, and this, that helps them to use their discretion effectively. So staff are generating compliance through practices that are fair, and they're producing safety through what we would call dynamic authority, so being visible and interactive, quietly authoritative. And the prisons that tend to fit in here, we don't think there are all that many, but the prisons that tend to fit here are um, well-staffed small units, places like pipe units we would, we would place there, um, or prisons that have a formal sort of therapeutic orientation. The point I'm making here is that lightness combined with presence is very different from lightness combined with absence. The second reason why the public-private distinction is a bit of a red herring is that since the point at which we did the research, we know, and obviously you know better than us, that a great deal has changed in the public sector with regard to staffing levels and a sort of loss of experience from the system. So the question that Alison and I have been asking ourselves recently is, how do we describe the use of authority and staff culture now, and what are its consequences? And in recent months, we've been to several prisons giving out surveys to prisoners and staff, having conversations um, to people throughout the prison, and this is helping us to work out what, where we think the system is at the moment. Prison A, a public sector Cat C establishment, was a prison where staff and prisoners were in despair. So staff were physically present, but they had checked out psychologically to some degree. They weren't unlocking prisoners on time, they weren't engaging with prisoners um, very deeply, and they weren't policing the wings very much. So the environment was both heavy with regard to staff attitudes, but also absent in the sense that staff stayed in and around their offices <coughs> and, they weren't, and weren't activating their authority unless they were really pushed to do so. Prison B, a private sector local prison, was a classic light absent establishment where staff actually were doing their best to engage with prisoners but were overwhelmed and disorganised mainly because they lacked experience and professional competence. But what was important was that prisoners recognised that staff were trying to work in their interests. And so although prisoners felt very frustrated, they rated the prison more positively than prison A. Prison C, a public sector local, was the best performing prison of all three of them. It, it had some problems. It had a rather traditional staff culture. So it was heavy rather than light, but it had retained quite a lot of motivated professional staff, experienced staff, so it had quite a lot of what we would call presence. So a predictable, reasonably safe regime for prisoners, and that was experienced by prisoners as a form of respect. We think that prison A might be just as representative as prison C, so that in some prisons, uh, a threshold seems to have been breached so that uniform staff have retreated 
a lot. Stop to using their professional competence productively. So being present in person, but absent in practice. And what I mean by that is mainly firefighting, but not actively engaging in some of the core tasks of the job. And I want to finish just by talking about some of the consequences of these changes. We observed these particularly in prisons A and B, but to some extent in prison C too. First of all, prisoners are describing to us what happens when um, they're placed in particular kinds of environments. So when the regime is chaotic, unpredictable and unresponsive, they say they lose their motivation to engage. Um, if staff become disengaged, then prisoners say that they need to act in more drastic ways in order to be noticed. So this is a prisoner saying at the bottom saying, the rules are clear on paper but not in practice. You do what you're told, follow the rules and you don't get anywhere. You see others swear, kick off and then get enhanced or moved on. You don't know what to do. It makes me not want to comply. The second effect is that we're seeing um, a greater degree of power sharing between staff and prisoners. But we're seeing very different forms of it. So that in prison C, authority was being carefully delegated to some prisoners to free staff up to engage in other tasks. Um, in, in prison A, power was handed to selective prisoners in a much more informal and risky way. So powerful prisoners were being used to police the wings and sort out trouble. Um, in prison B, prisoners had just sort of taken power from staff because they, could, they wanted to deal with the chaos that they saw around them. So these, are, and these things have very different consequences. So prison at C, where things had been done carefully and deliberately, 12% of prisoners agreed with the statement, this prison is run by prisoners rather than staff. In prisons A and B, 50% of prisoners were agreeing with that statement, this prison is run by prisoners rather than staff. Finally, the final consequence is that the experience that prisoners have um, depends much more on where they sit in the hierarchy. So what we're finding is that um, su uh, a, a very significant degree of difference between what the, what the sentence is like for you if you're a, kind, if you're a slightly more vocal uh, prisoner, someone that staff are delegating authority to, whereas if you're someone that's much less vocal and perhaps rather vulnerable, you're, much, you're concerned about leaving your cell. This just illustrates, again, some of the differences that we're finding in our survey with much higher levels of agreement for the statements in this prison things only happen for you if your face fits and in this prison there's a real pecking order between prisoners. And you'll, you'll see the difference there between prisons A and B and C and D. Prison D we added in um, because we think it's a light present prison. So, overall, we think there's been a bit of a shift towards the absent side of the diagram, and that's something that concerns us. The point that I'm making with these figures is that um, these shifts have real consequences for prisoners in terms of things like safety, fairness, and hope for the future. We know, of course, that they have consequences for you too. What I want to finish by saying is that what this hopefully emphasises is that the power that you have and the way in which you use it really matters for prisoners and can make all the difference to them. Thank you very much.